Hi besties, welcome back to my channel, or hi my name is Stacy. if you're new here. So for today's video, I'm just gonna do like a chit chat get ready with me for this springy themed makeup look. And also today I wore the It Cosmetics Nude Glow CC Cream, which is what I'm wearing on my face right now. And I also show you an 8 hour wear test just so you can see how this wears since it is new. But I'm not gonna do like a dedicated review to it. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this because it really helps out my channel. And let's just get right into the video. Okay, have you guys all zoomed in because I'm gonna do my eyes first today? Also, disclaimer, I do have a shirt on. It's just a halter top, so you can only see the straps. But yes, I'm not shirtless, okay, guys? It's just because it's literally 80 degrees outside today in the middle of April, so I don't really know what's going on there. Because also, it was like really cold last week, and now it's 80 degrees. And I'm like sweating in my room with these lights on me. So, so for today's eye look, I'm recreating the eye look that I did in my 2021 Best of Beauty video, which I'll link up here if you haven't watched it yet, because it's a really good video if I do say so myself. But yeah, I got a request to do the tutorial of this look, which is really simple. So first off, I'm going to prime my eyes with this new eyeshadow primer I got from ABH. I got this during the sale, but I didn't feature it in my sale video because I forgot to put it on. So normally I don't use eye primer, but also because I didn't own any. And I recently bought it because it's very light. I've recently been into a lot of like pastel eyeshadows, so I feel like the lightness of this primer will help make those pastel colors pop. So I'm using the Rose Quartz palette and the Mothership Utopian Dreams palette today. I only used the rose quartz palette for the mattes since there's nicer cooler toned and like pinky mattes. Whereas in the Utopian Dreams palette, there's no like cool tone mattes. First, I'm gonna go in with the shade Cherish, which is like the lightest pinky shade. Okay, so I'm just putting this in the transition shade just as a base to help with the blending. Also, I feel like this primer really does work. I've only used it a couple times so far, but I feel like it does really make the lighter shades pop because this color probably wouldn't show up that much on my regular skin tone. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the shade Serenity, which is a nice mauve tone shade and also kind of add that in the crease and more towards the outer corner. Okay, so anyway, I wanted to make this video more of like a chatty get ready with me. I'll tell you guys about my New York adventures because I just came back from New York that's why I haven't posted in a bit. Anyway, yeah, so the reason why I went to New York was for like a belated birthday celebration thing for myself because a lot of my friends happen to live in New York and that's not where I'm at. I live in like the DC metropolitan area. Okay, pause on the story. So now I'm gonna use the shade Happiness and I'm just gonna place that in the outer corner. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, I went for a belated birthday trip so I could see my bestie, Julie, if you're watching this, hello, give her a shout out. A lot of my friends are currently in New York just for like work or school and no one is where I live right now. So like on my actual birthday, I just spent it with my family. So yeah, I figured going to New York where a lot of my friends are would be fun. I just went for like a long weekend to hang out with them see the people I haven't seen in a while, eat some good food because New York has some really good food. Now we go into the Utopian Dream palette and I go in with this shade, which I think is my favorite shade in the palette. And I don't have the name card with me, but yeah, it's like this purpley duochrome blue shade. I'm just gonna tap that all over. And since we're doing our eyes first, we don't have to worry about the fallout. But like, look how perfect these colors are for spring. Like it's so pastel, so springy. I love it. I love purples. Anyway, back to New York. So the first day I got there, it was raining. Like it was literally monsooning. Okay, I like got there in the middle of a hurricane essentially. I don't think it was an actual hurricane, but it felt like one because like when I was walking to my friend's apartment, I literally almost got blown away. Like I had my umbrella and the wind and the rain was just, it was not doing it for me. I like physically was getting blown away. And then we went to a bar called Time Bar and the bar is super aesthetic. I feel like it would be great for a date night if any of you guys are in the New York area. Like it's very aesthetic. It's, it has like a kind of hole in the wall kind of feeling. Like it's very small. They have like all of these like flower decorations and all of the drinks are super, super aesthetic. They are like expensive. They're definitely like overpriced. It's because of the display. Like, like the presentation is definitely 10 out of 10. If you're looking for like a cool date night spot, I think that's a really good place. Also the drinks are pretty good. Anyways, I'm literally just applying this purple shade like all over my eyelids. So now I'm gonna go into this pinky gold green shade. I love this shade so much. Like these two shades are my babies. Like anytime I think of using this palette, I want to use those two shades. Look how beautiful that is. So yeah, I just kind of layered this on top, right in the center, but you kind of want to like blend it out as well. So it's like kind of like a halo eye, but like a messy halo eye. Yeah, like both these colors combined are so beautiful. It's like super fairy-like colors. After the bar, we went to a place in K-Town called Mui. I think it's pretty popular. Every time I go to New York, I go to K-Town. Like that's kind of where all the Asians go <laughs> all the time. You can see how that sparkle just added so much more like glam to this look. But yeah, Mui was cool. Also, since we went so late, like it was probably like 
midnight or something by the time we went. They turned the restaurant into like kind of a bar vibe. Like all the lights are off, but like they have these like neon light signs, you know what I mean? And like everyone there is like an ABG or an ABB. <laughs> it was kind of funny. But yeah, the food there was pretty good. So I would recommend checking it out if you're in K-Town. Okay, so that's about it for the shimmers, but pretty sure in the video I did an eyeshadow liner. I'm gonna go back into this rose quartz palette and use this darkest shade called Mantra. Also, when I went to New York, it was like super cold or like it was colder than I expected, especially because in March, I feel like it was super warm already. Like there were like some 70 degree days in March. Okay, actually, I don't think I used this color because it's very cool toned and I'm pretty sure in the video, I used a warmer toned shadow. Maybe I used this one, the dark brown matte in here. I'm gonna just try going over that. Yeah, it was like really cold in New York when I went because I brought all these like cute dresses and stuff, but I had to wear a jacket over it. So like kind of feed the point of my dresses. But since I don't go out that much, when I do go out, I want to look cute. You know what I mean? I definitely prefer warmer weather in terms of fashion. I'm also not the most fashionable person, but I just prefer like warm weather clothes, like dresses, skirts, tank tops, crop tops, you know, like all of those. So when it's super cold outside, all I end up wearing is like, I'll try to wear like a cute shirt, but then I wear leggings and like a big jacket. Jacket, so everything's covered. Also, I don't like wearing pants. Is that a weird thing to say? Like if I do have to wear long pants, they're leggings. I don't wear any other long pants. Like jeans, no. I just don't find anything else like comfortable. I feel like my ideal would be if someone just dressed me. Like if I had like a personal shopper or something or a personal stylist. Like I want to look good and I want to look put together, but I feel like I don't really care about clothes that much. And like, I don't care about like curating outfits and things like that. So like if someone else did that for me and I could just look good in the clothes that they picked for me, I feel like that would be my vibe. But I'm like the opposite when it comes to makeup. Like I care about the makeup. I care about creating my different looks and things like that. I feel like that's kind of weird because usually like most people, oh, if they like fashion, they're also like into makeup and they're also into skincare and stuff. I feel like out of all those things, I'm only into makeup. Like I care about the other things, but like minimally. You know? Okay, so that's most of the eyes all done. I'm just gonna go off camera to wipe away the fallout and I'll probably put on my mascara off camera too because it takes me a while and there's kind of no point in showing you guys. So I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back with the eyes mostly done. We just haven't done the bottom lash line yet. So today I wanted to use this new It Cosmetics CC Nude Glow Color Correcting Medium Coverage Skin Tint. So this is like their CC cream, but just like with less coverage. Also, I have this in the shade Fair. Anyway, so I've already used this either once or twice, and I really liked it, like the couple times I used it. But obviously I haven't like tried this in depth and I haven't showed it on camera, so. And I'll also do a wear test with this. So I'm just using my Rare Beauty blending brush to blend it out. Also, I feel like this Fair color match is really good. But anyway, I've been I've actually been really liking this. Like you see how it's giving me that glow and that medium coverage. It's not too glowy. And also it spreads out very easily across the skin, like super seamless. I feel like if you already like the original A Cosmetics CC Cream, you will also like this. But if you like slightly less coverage, because I feel like the original CC cream sometimes is a little bit like too full coverage. Like it can look a little bit heavy just because of how much coverage it has. Whereas this one I feel like is basically the same vibe but just less coverage, which in my opinion is actually better. But it kind of depends on like what coverage level you like and stuff like that. Like it's definitely perfecting my skin and kind of covering over blemished areas and things like that, but not fully covering it. So it's not gonna look cakey, but I feel like it evens my skin like the perfect amount because I do prefer like medium coverage foundations. You guys can see how this looks. Like immediately, I just feel so much more confident and just like evened everything that I wanted evened out and as a subtle glow, but nothing crazy. Like it's not too greasy on my more oily skin type. I'll show you guys up close too. Yeah, you guys can see how like it's not doing anything weird. It's just a really good foundation. But yeah, we'll see how it wears like at night when I do my eight hour check-in. I'll show you guys like what it looks like. But as of right now, I feel like it's looking basically perfect. Okay, now I'm just gonna do my brows really quick. So I'm gonna use my ABH brow powder. This is in the shade medium brown. Oh yeah, okay, so let's continue on my New York trip chronicles. Then on Friday, I went to the Dumbo. If you guys don't know what the Dumbo is, it's like this area where you can view the Manhattan Bridge, I think, but it's like in Brooklyn. Yeah, it's just like a really nice view spot, like an Instagram pic area kind of. Like a lot of people were there taking pictures, but if you walk close to the water, there's like this pebble beach, which is really nice. Like that whole area was just really nice. Like it was a vibe. It was also like really sunny that day when I went. And like a lot of people like will walk their dogs there or go on like family walks. There's lots of kids there. There's like some playgrounds. It's just a really nice place. I feel like when the weather is nice 
kind of chill and hang out. There's also like this grassy area that you can lay on. I feel like that would be really nice like in the summer for picnics or things like that. I don't know, it was just a very nice area and very scenic and because it's by the water, it's just like there's a nice breeze going on. It's just very pretty. So I really liked it there. I liked it more than I thought I would. I also went to a cat cafe called Koneko. The cats there were so cute. I've never been to a cat cafe before in my life. So that was my first cat cafe. I was in love with them. Like they were all so friendly. And there was this one cat who like came up to me and like slept in my lap and it was so cute. But yeah, besides that, we mainly did a lot of eating. Like I'm talking about every day, like we plan like the places we we're gonna eat. Oh, you guys know what's really good is this place called Ali Mama. I think it's in Manhattan Chinatown. That place just has the best mochi donuts that I've ever had in my entire life. Okay guys, like if you are in New York, you need to go to that place, specifically the strawberry one. It's not too sweet. The texture of the mochi donut is perfect. Like I've had mochi donuts before in other places, like those are fine, but like these are the perfect mochi donuts. Like the most perfect mochi donuts you will ever taste in your life, okay? Especially the strawberry one is so good. And I love strawberry flavored like anything, but that strawberry was like especially good because it's kind of like, it's sweet obviously, like kind of like candy, but it has like a tanginess to it. Like a candy tanginess. Like, I don't know. It's really good. Also, I tried their tea there and it's pretty good too. Like they have boba and stuff like that. And it's like aesthetic because they use like, you know, the butterfly pea flower like tea. You know what I'm talking about? Like where, where it's like blue or like changes color with the temperature. Yeah, the food in New York is popping because you guys just have so much food there. And also a lot of it is kind of more authentic. Like, you know, if you want Chinese food, you can get like real Chinese food. The thing is like, it's so accessible too. Cause there are so many of those types of stores, especially if you go to like Chinatown or Flushing or something like that. Oh, speaking of food. So we also went to this really famous hot pot place called Heidi Lao. Like you guys have probably heard of it if you're like into Asian food. Yeah, it's like a super famous hot pot place in China. Like it's directly from China but I think that they only have like US locations in NYC and LA and like really big cities like that. Like they don't have any in DC, or at least not that I know of. But since I was in New York, I went there for like my pseudo birthday dinner because it was like a week after my birthday. So it wasn't my real birthday dinner, but I had some of my other friends come out and that's in Flushing, which is like China central. <laughs> like when you go to Flushing, it literally is like you step foot into China and I haven't been to China in like years, but I think it's so cool that like in New York, you can have places like that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, also apparently like Stephanie Sue really loves Heidi Lao. If you guys watch her, she's like a mukbanger on YouTube and I love her. Yeah, I was like, I have to try it. I'm using this Bobbi Brown color corrector. So Heidi Lao is really famous for their customer service, supposedly. Like they sang happy birthday to me. They brought out these like big signs and stuff like that. Like it's really cool and funny. And they also gave me like a free hot pot base to take home, which was nice. Oh yeah, they also have this thing called dancing noodles where they like pull the noodles in front of you, but they do it like a dance, like a Chinese dance. So it's like they're like pulling it over their head and like doing all these cool dance moves while pulling your noodles in front of you. It's just a vibe. It is on the more expensive side, but I feel like if you're going to like celebrate something or whatever, like it's really nice. Oh, and also their bathrooms were so lit, guys. First of all, it was super clean. Generally speaking, I hate public restrooms because they're always so dirty and smelly. I just prefer like going to the bathroom at home if I can. But yeah, that bathroom is so nice and clean and they even had bidets like on their toilet seats. Like, excuse me. The seat also had a seat warmer. Like it was hot when I sat on it. Yeah, you could bidet yourself, but I wasn't sure how, how I felt about that like in a public restroom, so I just didn't. But there's the option too. But that was so cool. And then they also like give you a bunch of free stuff. Like they have free toothbrushes, toothpaste, I think, like hair ties, stuff like that. And also they have this like perfume. They have Miss Dior in the bathroom. In the men's bathroom, they have like Dior Sauvage or something. But anyway, it's just like so funny because it's like so bougie and such a vibe. And the Miss Dior made the bathroom smell really nice. Oh, by the way, I'm using the Kosas Barbular Concealer today. Hold on, I'm just gonna blend it with my dry sponge. And then also in Flushing, we got one of my favorite bubble tea places, which is called Coco. And I first discovered it like when I was in China. And I remember when I first discovered it there, it was so amazing. So Coco is also one of those like originated from China stores. So again, I feel like you can only find it like in New York or like places with a really dense Asian population. So I was finally able to reunite with my fave Coco and it was so yummy. And then we also went to do one of my favorite activities of all time, which is karaoke. And that was in Flushing as well. Cause Flushing is just like, it's super Asian. You can find all the Asian activities and food there. So that's really nice. But Flushing is kind of far from Manhattan. Oh yeah, we also went to this really good dessert place called Flower and Dessert. And they had really good bing, which is like, it's just shaved ice, but it's shaved so finely that it's actually like creamy and like melts immediately in your mouth. Like it's not like a typical regular shaved ice. You know what I mean? That was super good. Oh yeah, but back to the karaoke. So it was like really cheap there in comparison to the other places. Like it was only like $20 an hour, which is really not bad for karaoke, especially like in the US. And also like you got, you can get like free food up to like the amount that you paid. We stayed there for like three hours, which is a vibe. Okay. But like, so if you paid $60, you can get $60 worth of food, like 
for no extra cost, which was amazing. And I've never had any other place do that. And also the system, you could put it in English, which is nice because sometimes a lot of karaoke places, you can only have it like in Chinese or Korean or something, which makes it hard. Like you can't read like most ABCs. But yeah, no, that place was perfect. Like it was the best KTV place I've ever been to. It's called Real KTV if you're in Flushing, by the way. It's in the New World Mall. Okay, so now I wanna use this powder, which I also got during the sale. I got it like later in the sale, so I didn't feature it in my Sephora VIP sale haul. This is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake powder in the shade cupcake. Since I'm an oily gal, I feel like I can invest in powders, you know what I mean? And this has like a pinky undertone. I was intrigued by these because of their new cherry blossom color, but that was out of stock. So I just decided to pick up this cupcake color. And I'm also scared that the cherry blossom one is gonna be too dark on my like fairish skin. Let me know if you guys have tried that and if you have like light skin like I do. But I hope it doesn't have like a darkening effect. This cupcake powder though, I feel like it's light enough and it still has that pinky undertone. And I already tried it once, but so far I really like it. Like it's very smoothing. Hopefully you guys can see. I didn't add that much. The one thing I will say though is I really don't like the scent of this. So it kind of has like this floral smell, but it's like a weird floral to where it's kind of like mixed with like a baby powder smell. And to me, it smells almost like plasticky. Like, I don't know, like I feel like certain dolls, like dolls that you would buy as a kid, like smell like this. I don't understand why she has to fragrance everything so much. It's not too strong, but I'm pretty like sensitive to smells as in like I smell a lot of smells, like even if they're very weak. So not the best. But besides that, I can tell that this powder is very, very smoothing. Like hopefully you guys can see this side compared to this side, especially around my nose and like I just have some texture there and there's just like no texture on the side. So yeah, so far I am pretty impressed with this powder. I feel like I haven't been wearing it long enough to have any like final opinions. So far I am pretty impressed with it. It definitely has like a very smooth and quality to it. I think maybe even more than the Laura Mercier one, which is the one that I have been using. Like it just makes my face look super airbrushed. But we'll see how it manages to like, you know, lock in my makeup and stuff like that with the wear test. I'm gonna go in and finish my bottom lash line. I guess gonna go into Serenity maybe. I'll put it on the bottom lash line. Like, ooh, that's, that's a pretty good match. Same thing on this side. But yeah, so overall I had a really good time in New York. I was really happy I got to see my friends again because I don't get to see them like in person very often. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna go in with this champagne shade, just as an inner corner highlight. But yeah, so I had a great time in NYC. I will say though, like I probably wouldn't want to move there. Like no hate to you if you do live there because like most of my friends live there and they enjoy it there. It's definitely a really nice place to visit as well. I feel like I definitely don't fit like the NYC vibe. Like, it's very much, you know, like hustle culture, like always on the grind. And I'm just way more of a chill girl. You know what I mean? And while the public transport is really nice, cause it's like convenient to get everywhere, but also like it takes so long to get anywhere. Cause you have to like walk slash public transport there. So like any place, like even if it's relatively close, you have to leave like half an hour at least, which I'm not used to because like since I live in the suburbs, you have to drive everywhere, which is what I'm used to. But then like, you know, driving takes faster like if it's a close by place. But I will say though, like I always walk so much when I go to NYC, which is like really good for your health. Like I always hit the 10,000 steps a day at least or like 20,000 steps sometimes. So I definitely notice like I feel more physically active and like healthy when I go to New York. And I also really like that everything's open really late cause like, cause sometimes you get hungry at night or you wanna like get boba or something. But if it's like 11 PM, at least in the suburbs, everything's closed. But in the city, it doesn't close until like 2 AM. So I do like that. Yeah, but if I had to choose to move to another city, I would I would want to move to LA, which I know is like some people's worst nightmare ever. <laughs> At least for, with the few times that I visited LA, I really loved it there. I just like the more relaxed, energy there and also the weather is so nice but yeah i know how some people are like oh there's like too many influencers or like people are so fake there i don't know i feel like it's just like about who you surround yourself with that's just my two cents but yeah that's my next life goal is to be able to move out to la when i have enough money and kind of live there on my own for a bit but yeah it might be kind of scary because i like basically don't know anyone there so i would just like be moving out on my own like to a new city. That thought kind of scares me, but anyway, now on to blush. Really exciting. I have this new M Cosmetics blush. Can we take a second to just appreciate this packaging? Like she's giving. This is part of their like spring launch and this is in the shade Cherub. I know it's sold out pretty quickly. I don't know if they've restocked, but I know that they plan on restocking, but I've been using this like off camera for a bit now because I just haven't had a chance to like feature this in a video. And I've been super loving this shade of blush. Like, let me just show you guys because it's so freaking pretty. Honestly, I think that this is my favorite M Cosmetics blush shade that I have out of her Heaven's Glow formula. So first of all, it's very buildable. Like it's not too pigmented. And isn't that so pretty and cute? I'm in love with this blush shade. So hopefully they restock soon so you guys can all get your hands on it because it's definitely giving. 
especially for spring. It's like the perfect springy pink. I'm literally in love. Also, it does have a slight sheen to it. Hopefully you guys can see compared to this side. It definitely adds a glow, but it's nothing too much. This is a pretty true pink, which seems to be the trend these days, like for a true pink blush. I also like it because it's not too bright of a pink. Like it's not like the Dior pink blush. That one can get kind of bright. I feel like the tone of this one is more pastel. It's not too pastel. Like it doesn't have much white in it, but I don't know. It's just like a lighter pink, which is nice. And it's not like so neon. It's just the perfect springy pink for like those literal cherub cheeks. I have to say that this is M Cosmetics best powder blush yet in terms of the tone. Like, isn't this blush so cute? And you can see how it's like making the apples of my cheeks kind of like pop out because it's so glowy. I just feel adorable when I wear this blush. Okay, now I'm gonna remove my lip gloss, so I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back from removing my lip gloss that I had to like moisturize my lips. It was this Tower 28 pistachio gloss, which has been my favorite to kind of like do as a lip prep thing. I, I use this as my first step to hydrate my lips. So by the time I get to like my lip color part, my lips are nice and hydrated and exfoliated. I don't have any like new lip products to show you guys, but I do have a new to me product. So first I'm gonna line my lips with Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. And then I blend it out. I just like the way like blended out lips look better. So anyway, now I have this Fenty Beauty Cream Gloss Balm and this is in the shade Bubble Binge. So it used to only be sold as a set, but now they sell it individually, but this was only on the Fenty website. And I bought this during their recent like 25% off, I think, sale that they had on their website because I wanted to try this. This is like a super cool tone Barbie pink. But I feel like it's perfect for spring. It is a little bit out there because it has a kind of neon quality to it, but I feel like because it's a gloss and kind of sheer, it makes it more wearable. But yeah, this is definitely not gonna work for all skin tones in my opinion. I will say though that this formula is really good and also because it's super pigmented, you don't have to add like too much product so it doesn't like get too thick on the lips before you get like the color that you want. And yeah, like this formula is super moisturizing, which is nice. Like I love the Fenty gloss bombs. They're iconic for a reason. But I feel like this lip goes with the cheeks pretty well. And I guess like with the whole look, since we're we're kind of going for like a pastel like pinky purple vibe today i guess okay so i think that's about it for the face i'm just gonna spray it with some charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless and look i'm almost down to the end but i also was able to pick up finally a replacement in my earlier video i was like oh i don't think i'm gonna be able to pick her up during the sale but she did come back so now i have a replacement thank god because i was really getting to the end and i was trying to save it okay so that's about it for this makeup look Tell you guys take a closer look I'm kind of in love with how everything turned out. So now I'm gonna do an eight hour wear test and check in with you guys. So I'll see you guys then. Hi guys, I'm back after eight hours. And also I fell asleep because it's midnight right now. So I also put this makeup through taking a nap and that's why I sound like really sleepy because I just woke up. But yeah, so this is how it's looking. Let me zoom you guys all the way in. So hopefully you guys can see. I am getting oily in the T-zone, as usual, like this always happens. But hopefully you guys can see that nothing has broken down. I just have extra like shine here next to my nose and on my forehead, but it's nothing like crazy. But yeah, you can see how like there's literally no bunching up or disintegrating. It will tend to do it in my nose lines. So I actually think that this held up better than the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer, which is what I used in my previous video, because it did kind of like settle into my nose lines, whereas this one isn't doing that. It's just getting kind of shiny. So overall, like you guys can see, but overall, it's still looking pretty good and everything else held up as you can see. The blush is still there. Like everything's just looking very good. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like, like if we just blot, we use my Beauty Blender. I didn't put any powder on this. I'm just using this to block. Basically good and new, are we not? Now I'm gonna go back in with some of my Huda Beauty setting powder. Okay, actually no, I think this powder is giving because normally I feel like, especially with my Kosas Revealer Concealer, I do like crease a little just cause it is like a creamier concealer. But this is like not creasing. Like this powder is kind of giving. Yeah, after blotting, I feel like everything looks good, but let's just add a teeny bit more powder just to see like how refreshed we can make this look. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna add some in this area. Here, I'll only add it to this half first. And I only put it in my oldiest areas. You don't add too much. I feel like it does start to get a little bit heavy. But here, 
but it did completely like mattify and just take away the excess shine hopefully you can see like this is the oily side no powder but i blocked with the sponge and this side i added powder you can see how that immediately like re-blurred the skin i have some like texture here and it's kind of like picking up over that texture part so honestly it's probably better if i just blotted it and didn't repowder but the powder still looks good like if you had to like go out or something you probably want to repowder you know i repowdered this side and i'm gonna repowder in the center a little bit i have the, like similar texture on this side and didn't really pick up on that side i think just having to kind of rub off on my texture here which is why it's looking a little bit patchy like right there compared to here there's no patches whatsoever but yeah we're basically looking good as new guys like look Honestly, I, I'm pretty impressed with this because obviously it's like not really meant for super long lasting wear considering it is like a medium coverage skin tint type of thing. Based on my presence from the few times I've worn this plus today's wear test, I actually think I like this better than the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. Just because it's the same vibe, like slightly glowy, medium coverage, although I would say that this has more coverage than the Rare Beauty one. I just feel like it's more smoothing, more perfecting, and I feel like it lasts longer because it didn't like bunch up in my nose like the Rare Beauty one did. Although like that one still didn't look bad like I, and I could have just patted it out with my fingers which like isn't terrible. But yeah, I feel like this one just looks better after a longer day. That's about all my thoughts for today. Hope you guys enjoyed joining me with my spring get ready with me and eight hour wear test of some of the new products. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and comment and subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this because it really helps on my channel and it would really mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.